Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about 10 Linux terminal commands you need to know. So let's get started. Number one, cd command. While with the help of cd command, you can navigate through the Linux files and directories. Basically, if I write here cd and if I hit enter, I'm onto my home directory. Let's say I want to go to my desktop. So for that purpose, I'll just write here cd space desktop. And after hitting the enter, as you can see, we are onto our desktop directory. Let's say you want to go back to your home directory. For that purpose, just write here cd and hit enter and we are back. Let me open my files and let me show you how many categories or how many directories do we have. Well, here if you see, we have desktop, documents, download, music and many other directories which are there by default. We can navigate through between any one of these with the help of our cd command. Let's say I have a folder into my downloads directory with the name of firefox.tmp and I want to go to that directory. So for that purpose, I'll use my cd command. So first of all, I'll write here cd downloads and after that, I'll write here firefox.tmp. So I'll just write here firefox and I will just hit enter now. So here if you see, we are into our downloads slash firefox.tmp folder. So this is how you can use your cd command to navigate through your directories and not only that, you can access those directories which are available into some other directories. And now let's move on to the next one. Number two, pwd command. While pwd command lets you to find out the path of your current working directory that you are currently in. And this command will return you an absolute path, which is basically a path of all the directories that starts with the forward slash. For example, if I write here pwd hit enter, at the moment I'm into my home directory. Let's go to our downloads directory. So for that purpose, I'll write here cd downloads. And now we are into our downloads directory. If I write here pwd, so here you can see we are into our downloads directory. So this is how you can find out your current working directory with the help of your pwd command. Number three, ls command. Well, the ls command gets used to view the content of a particular directory. By default, this command will display you the content of your current working directory. So for example, as we are into our home directory, and if I ls here, so these are the directories or these are the contents that are available into my home directory. There are some flags that you can use along with your ls command. For example, if I write here ls space hyphen l, here we have all the permissions, user and every other information with respect to each directory in here. If I write here ls space hyphen a, it will show me all the hidden things as well. So here if you see, we have some more directories and some more things in here that were not available in here earlier. As you can see, we have dot bash history, dot bash logout, dot ssh, dot local, etc. So these are some of the flags that you can use along with your ls command. If I write here ls space hyphen al, hit enter. So not only that, I have my hidden directories and hidden files. I also have the permissions with regard to each of them. So this is how you can use your ls command. Number four, touch command. Well, the touch command allows you to create a file into your system. And as an example, I'll show you one thing. For example, if I write here, touch space abc.txt, and if I now hit enter, and if I ls here, here you can see we have abc.txt file available, and it has been created successfully with the help of our touch command. Let me go to my desktop first. I will just hit enter and now if I write here touch space 123.txt and now if I hit enter you will see a file onto my desktop now as you can see on the bottom of my screen we have a new file with the name of 123.txt so this is how you can use your touch command number five cat command and it is one of the most frequently used commands in Linux it is used to list the content of a file onto your standard output. To run this command, just simply write here cat and after that write the name of a file. I do not have anything onto my home directory, so first of all I'll head to my desktop and now I will write here cat space abc.txt and now if I hit enter, 
So here you can see this is the output of my abc.txt file. Let me open through the GUI as well. So here I have the same information that I got onto my terminal. So this is how you can use your cat command. And not only that, with the help of your cat command, you can add the data or content into a particular file as well. And let's say you want to see the content of more than one file with the help of your cat command. For that purpose, just write here cat name of the first file, which is abc.txt. Give it a space and write the name of the second file. In my case, it is 123.txt. If I hit enter, I have the content of both of those files. I do not have anything into my 123.txt. That is why we only have the name of the weekdays. So this is how you can use your cat command. At the end, I'll show you one more thing and that is cat space hyphen n abc.txt hyphen n is a flag that gets used to print out the line number along with the content as well. If I hit enter now, so here if you see we have line number here as well. And that's it for the cat command. Let's move ahead. Number six, mkdir. Well, mkdir stands for make directory. You will use this command to create new directories into your Linux distributions. And you can do that from your terminal. So first of all, let's write here mkdir space and give the name to your directory that you want to have. I will name it as Zubair and I will hit enter now. So here if you see onto my desktop, I have a new directory with the name of Zubair. Now let's say you want to create a directory inside this directory. So first of all, what I'm going to do here, I'll write here mkdir space Zubair slash and now I'll write a new name for my new directory. I'll name it as a, B, C. If I hit enter now, so let me open my Zubair directory. I will just open that one. So here, if you see, we have a new directory with the name of ABC. So this is how you can use your MKDIR command to create new directories. And not only that, you can create new directories inside a directory as well. And now let's move on to the next one. Number seven, RMDIR. Well, let's say you want to delete a directory and you have to use rmdir command for that. Let me create a directory first onto my desktop. So I will just write here mkdir abc hit enter. So here I have a directory. Now I want to delete that one. So for that purpose, we have a command which is rmdir space name of the directory that you want to delete. I will just write here abc hit enter. So here if you see we do not have anything onto my desktop. Let me recreate that directory once again because I want to show you some more thing in the next command. So here we have the directory and let's move ahead. Number eight, rm command. Well, rm command gets used to delete those directories that are not empty or possess something into them. So first of all, this is my abc directory. Let me open that one and let me right click on it. I will create a new folder. I'll name it as Zubair, hit enter and I will just get out of this. If I delete this folder with the help of my rmdir command, I'll not be able to do that because it says directory not empty. So for that purpose, I have to use rm command and along with the flag, which is hyphen r, r mean remove. And now if I write here abc hit enter, now we have successfully deleted our directory. So this is how you can delete those directories that are not empty. Number nine, ping command. Well, the ping command allows you to check your connectivity status to a particular server. For example, if I write here ping space google.com hit enter. So it is now checking my status and my connection with Google server. And it will also check if we are able to connect to Google or not. So that was all about the ping command. And now let's move on to the last command of this video. Number 10, top command. Well, top is a utility that comes by default with every Linux distribution. This utility or this command allows you to check the hardware resources that are in use at the moment. For example, if you see here, these are the processes that are running. These are the resources that are in use at this moment by each particular process. And at the top, we have summary of all the information about resources that are in use at this particular moment. So this is how you can have all the information with regard to your hardware processes and their resources. And that was all about our top command. And that brings us to the end of today's video. 
I hope now that you must have liked all the command that I had shown you in this video. If that is the case, please leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.